Hey VC, uh, I want to shoot a quick update. It's just uh, new st stuff, but it's I haven't been out digging for a while. Kind of been chilling out a little bit, but uh, this stuff's been sitting around in the uh, just in or TV listen to pile, or whatever you want to call it. So I've just been kind of digging here in the music room. So I started shoot this real quick. I just got finished uh, rambling in uh, the last video for uh, replying to Miko, his contest, which I uh, kind of enjoyed doing that, and uh, I like to, I don't know, invite other members to do it, maybe, uh, you know, kind of give just a brief history of, you know, some of the big moments in your collecting or listening or whatever, you know, how you got started and all that, I mean, I don't know if you want to call it a thread or whatever, or, uh, or you know, it takes you a couple videos or something that could be kind of interesting just to hear uh, stories, you know. So, but anyways, so like I say, uh, last few weeks I've just been uh, listening to stuff I've picked up over, uh, some of the stuff's been here for a year or more, more and I haven't got to yet, so I've been kind of chilling and trying to get to all that stuff, so and get started a uh, couple CDs to begin with real quick just a couple uh, found this Annihilator Alice in Hell which is pretty cool it's on a gold disc great album I think this was their uh, first album and not a huge Annihilator fan uh, this album is the second one which I can't think of the title now definitely dug but, uh, cool stuff. Uh, sorry, looking at the year. I think this was, uh, reissued in 98. But the album actually came out in 89. But, uh, very cool. Good, uh, thrash Canadian band. Uh, this, kind of a blind buy. I uh, don't remember this band at all. But it's, uh, Jackal. Fake visions, and it's not the jackal with the chainsaw and all that. But, uh, this is on uh, Rising Sun, it came out in '93. Pretty cool, uh, kind of early power metal with a little bit of Queen's right kind of prog, a little bit thrown in, but very cool. I think these guys were from, I want to say Germany, but that may be wrong. I looked it up, I can't remember now. But, you know, Laz, if you're watching, band to check out. I know you like the power metal stuff. And this is interesting. Uh, Sorcery. It's called Sorcery 2. This is on my friend's uh, reissue label, Old Metal. And this actually has, uh, cripes, I ain't gonna remember his name. But, uh, the singer from Jafria before Jafria. And I don't believe he was on the first album, but he's on this. It's pretty cool. So that's the CDs. Uh, listening to right now, James Cotton, High Compression. Just a good blues album. It's on Alligator. Alright. Through this one today. Uh, the wife's been down here messing around all day in the basement in one of the other rooms and threw it on kind of for her to listen to, and I ended up liking it. Bob Dylan at Budokan. It's pretty good. I mean, I'm not the huge Dylan fan like a lot of people in the VC, but I mean, I do like him. But uh, I really ended up kind of digging this. Didn't think I would. And this is just, uh, this is fantastic. And, of course, it makes me think of uh, uh, Memphis Vinyl Jim and the Misses. It's the History of Rhythm and Blues, the Memphis Sound, 1967. It's just a compilation on Atlantic Records. And this is just good from top to bottom, man. Sam and Dave, who I love. And there's some people on here I've never heard, like uh, Arthur Conley. And uh, Joe Tex, 
But then there's also Aretha Franklin, Booker T, Otis Redding, Barkays, King Curtis, which it has Memphis Soul Stew, which is a song uh, Jim and the Mrs. use for their intro for their videos. Man, this was great. Man, I think I got this for like a, a buck, 50 cents, something like that. Uh, I got a reissue of St. Vitus, Thirsty and Miserable. It's just uh, kind of like a 12-inch EP. It's got three songs on it. It's a reissue on SST. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Cannonball Adderley. It's uh, live in San Francisco. It's, uh, originally it was on Riverside, but this is actually a Japanese pressing. And I'm trying to remember. Let me show the label here. But it has the, you know, the insert with the Japanese writing. It's got like a green label. Uh, milestone. I'm not sure when this came out or if it came out at the same time as the Riverside Pressing. But a uh, pretty good album. I like Cannonball Adderley. Alright, next up, uh, this is just an awful album. It's pretty bad. Uh, I think I picked this up at a flea market. It's going through a box today and pulled it out. I'm like, hey, I forgot about grabbing this. Gotta check it out. It's the Ghoul Brothers, Ghoul Daves. And this came out in 83. And it's just really wimpy, bad 80s music with cheesy, like, supposed horror lyrics. You know, I mean, songs like uh, I Feel Ghoulish, Ode to the Horror Man. I want to eat your flesh. There's a little story here where it says there was an experiment. They set up a recording studio in a mental institution, or in a prison, and uh, these two uh, murderers got together and made this album, which is all a bunch of crap. It's just, <laughs> it's just bad. But so bad, I'll keep it. This guy I'd never heard of, grabbed it, uh, really dug the cover. It just looked cool. <clears throat> and I've been checking out Jazz. Booker Irvin. This is on uh, Pacific Jazz. This was great. Definitely want to check some more out by this guy. But, uh, like I say, I know nothing about him. It's uh, Structurally Sound is the name of the album. One of my favorite albums, actually, back in the day, was uh, Maria McKee. This is her first solo album. She was the lead singer for Lone Justice, and after they broke up, she went solo. She's got a bunch of albums out now, but I don't think she's ever topped this. This is just a top to bottom. Good. Yeah, it's very uh, rootsy, Americana leanings. <clears throat> She's a great songwriter. <clears throat> uh, 1994, Please Stand By. Pretty cool. This is uh, early 80s. Uh, 79, I'm sorry. And the singer of this band is Karen Lawrence. And did a little research and come find out she like had done some backup for Aerosmith. And actually... This is their second album, 1994's second album. And uh, on the first album, uh, uh, Brad Whitford played guitar from Aerosmith, played a few, on a few tracks. But uh, I think they did two albums, broke up, she went on to have a solo career and play in a couple other bands. Uh, this was a blind buy at, a, at one of the shows. The triggers, uh, shoot your mouth off. And it's just kind of uh, an 80s punk. It's not bad. Female singer. 
that's on uh, dirt nap. I think I found it for a buck. Still sealed. Same with this one. Stism. Stism. I can't pronounce it. I'm not sure. Coping with Society. Another punk band. Same deal. I found this at a show for a buck seal. This is on uh, Intensive Scare Records. And this was actually put out on CD by Man's Ruin. But this is the original pressing. It's not bad. It's a 70s uh, sounding kind of punk. Alright, next is uh, Zerfus. It's like a reissue. It's uh, it says it came out in 73 and they were from Indianapolis. And just kind of that psychedelic yeah, indie kind of thing. I don't think this sweat on a major or anything like that. And I think it's one of those rarity kind of deals. I haven't done a lot of research into it. It was pretty cool. It didn't really blow me away. Uh, next, Turbo Negro. self type new album by these guys pretty good I picked this up because uh, George was showing it American Music Picker and I'm glad I did it's pretty cool and I noticed uh, had it sitting out turned the lights out and it was glowing this whole cover glows in the dark so it's kind of cool and there's that uh, big block rock like Garner talks about Next, great album, Mount Carmel, Real Women, newer band, uh, three-piece, kind of uh, heavy blues, you know, like a 70s kind of thing. Very cool band. They have, uh, I think this is their second album, they have another album, I'd like to track down. Alright, next, uh, Sound Barrier, Total Control. This is a killer. Yeah, early metal album. Uh, it's on MCA. This guy's uh, first release was on a major. And after that, they were basically dropped and they ended up on you know some of the uh, indie metal labels. But uh, I think the guitar player actually went on. He played with I can't think of the band. They all kind of went on and did some other things. They were all African American and just kick ass. Definitely worth checking out if you dig the metal. Crap, I can't think of the band the guitar player went on to. Oh, well, it'll come to me. Uh, this was like, if you've been watching <clears throat> my videos, I've been on like a serious budgie thing here lately. And I was looking on eBay the other day, and the album, the vinyl goes for, all their early vinyl goes for too much money. But I was on there kind of looking around, and I found this, but the guy had his auction kind of screwed up. He had, instead of having the picture of the album, he had a picture of like a, a classical album, like a Bach album or something. I'm like, what the crap is this? Yeah, I, you know, I click on it, pull it up, and, you know details are all there for the album and it was sitting at like 11 bucks when usually this goes for a lot more but it's a 12 inch single it's uh, If Swallow Do Not Induce Vomiting it's from 1980 I believe and it's kind of when they've moved on they're a little you know they're getting into that new wave British heavy metal kind of thing they got like a little bit of an ACDC sound or something but I mean it's a killer really dug this but I ended up you know I put a bid on it but you know what the hell I'll put a minimum bid just see what happens and nobody else bid on it I guess because he had the wrong picture up so came in the mail and it's like near mint it's perfect all right the next album I kind of showed I was listening to when I was uh, showing some of the the tees from the metal collection and this just blew my mind uh, LJ and I came across this. I came across a video and I texted him about it and he was checking it out and then he found more and sent it to me and I'm like, that's it. I just went ahead and ordered it. 
and I'm glad I did because the guy on eBay had five copies and they all went quick. I got the last one and now there's one guy from the U.S. the last time I looked on eBay and he won 85 bucks for this. <coughs> it's just nuts. But it's Orchid. Name of the album is Capricorn. And this is just amazing. It's it's that Black Sabbath 70s rock. You know, Doom, Stoner, or whatever. And there's a million bands in that scene that, you know, go for that sound. And they're alright. But these guys, there's something special about these guys, I think. They're just, they're all, everybody in the band is great. Incredible singer. And this was their second album. I just ordered their first one. So hopefully that'll be here uh, early next week. But uh, if you dig that sound, you know, uh, Robert, uh, the teacher, you know, you were showing some kind of stoner stuff the other day. Like, I know you like the sword and all that. If you like the sword, you'll probably like this. This is just great. So, and it's uh, two records. comes with a big poster. And it, I don't think there was a download. But, uh, so worth it. Uh, the Hives, uh, Vinny VD Vicious. And this was kind of the big one, I guess. It had the, the hit, which I can't even remember now. I hate to say I told you so, I think that was it. This is on uh, white vinyl, on Gearhead. Really dig these dudes. And some punk. Wayne County and the electric chairs, man enough to be a woman. And uh, Wayne County's an interesting dude, interesting woman, whatever you want to say. That's uh, Wayne and that's Jane, same uh, person. Some albums he's Wayne County, some albums she's Jane County. And uh, I don't know if he's had the change or whatever, but he was part of the. Uh, New York punk scene in the 70s. I mean, I've read a story about where uh, they were playing a show and handsome Dick Manitoba was, I guess, giving him some shit. So uh, Wayne County just took his mic stand and clocked him in the face, broke his nose, and the whole nine. But uh, cool stuff, man. I mean, if you dig New York punk from the 70s, definitely check this stuff out fits right in there, you know, with the Richard Hill and, and all that kind of stuff. That whole CBGB's do. And the last one, I couldn't believe I found this. I have like a CD of these guys. It's uh, Rubber City Rebels. These guys were from Toledo, Ohio. And it's more 70's punk. Uh, they were kind of in that scene with the Dead Boys. I mean, I think they you know, did shows with them and that kind of thing. But this is a great 70s American punk. Some really good songs. Young and Dumb, uh, Lonely Fool. You can probably find some you know, stuff on YouTube, I'm sure. And I'm not sure if they ever had another official album or not. <laughs> I know they had, uh, excuse me, I got still a little bit of cold corn or something. Uh, I knew they had like a an EP or a split EP they did with somebody else back in the day, but I found this at the record show, and actually with that Wayne County at the same time, both those albums were just like, you know, made the record show. <laughs> but like I say, if you're, both those two albums, if you're into 70s punk, and if you've never heard them, definitely worth checking out. Alright, that's it. Uh, just like I say, been going through, checking out stuff, been sitting around here forever, and we'll probably continue doing that for the next couple weeks, I guess, till after Christmas or something. Might go out tomorrow for a little bit and look around, but I'm not sure yet. So I hope everybody's having a good weekend coming up here and goes out digging and shoot some videos. Hey, Amen.
thanks everybody for watching.